Question 36 says, a firm encountering economies of scale over some range of output will have a A, rising long run average cost curve, B, falling long run average cost curve, C, constant long run average cost curve, D, rising then falling then rising long run average cost curve. Um, so when we, uh, so okay, so again, we, we mentioned this a little bit in the previous question, but economies of scale refers to a circumstance for certain industries and certain producers where for a certain range of output, increasing the num output of, uh, increasing the overall level of output actually starts to decrease your long run average costs. Um, the reason we see this is often in industries where fixed cost is very high and variable cost is very low. Again, like an automobile industry where you have high fixed cost to build a factory, but low fixed cost to build each car. And so in those circumstances, by increasing the output, you're actually decreasing your overall average cost because you're dividing the fixed costs that you uh, incurred in the initial start of, uh, start of the company among more and more units of production. So. Going back to this question, if you're encountering economies of scale, that means you are in that range in which your uh, cost curve is falling. Uh, and so we would say that answer choice B is the best answer here. A firm encountering economies of scale over some range of output will have a falling long run average cost curve. And so that would be our best answer here. Taking a look at the previous year's answer, they also put B. And so we're all set there. Okay, question 37 says, when a firm doubles its input and find that it's, finds that its output has more than doubled, this is known as A, economies of scale, B, constant returns to scale, C, diseconomies of scale, or D, a violation of the law of diminishing returns. So, look at, let's, let's, break down, let's, let's break this down between by the answer choices. A says economies of scale, and so we know that uh, for economies of scale, uh, when you have the uh, when you have production going up for variable income input, and then you have a decrease in uh, overall average costs, then that would be what we would refer to as economies of scale. Um, that doesn't seem to match up with what we're talking about here because we don't even talk about costs at all for this firm, right? So it's not, it doesn't seem to be uh, the fact that the, the case that A would be the right answer here. B says constant returns to scale. And again, constant returns to scale refers to a situation where increasing one's variable costs, sorry, increasing one's output uh, has no impact on increasing or decreasing average costs. And so again, with this question, we're not dealing with costs, it seems like. And so that doesn't seem to be the case for uh, this question in particular. C says diseconomies of scale, and diseconomies of scale refers to a situation in which the uh, increasing uh, output levels actually increases your average cost, and so it's bad. And so, again, we're not talking about cost in this question, so it doesn't seem to be the case that diseconomies of scale is the right answer here. And we're left with D, a violation of the law of diminishing returns. And what the law of diminishing returns says is that when you start to increase your inputs, for example, labor, that each additional increase in input should decrease the overall uh, product, production or output marginally uh, for each marginal increase in inputs. So when we say in this question that you've doubled inputs and then you found that output has more than doubled, that seems to be a clear violation of the law of diminishing returns because uh, the output increase has uh, yeah the output increase has uh, outpaced the growth in inputs and that, that that's not the, that's not what you would expect to see when you're looking at the law of diminishing returns. So it seems to be that for this question, D would be the right answer. When a firm doubles its inputs and finds that its output has more than doubled, this is known as a violation of the law of diminishing returns. So the previous student put economies of scale, and uh, that that's going to be a, a a hard one for me to agree with just because, um, again, economies of scale refer to a situation in which increasing output decreases costs and we have no mention of whether or not costs have increased or decreased in this question. And so, uh, moreover, D seems to be clearly uh, correct when we look at the fact that uh, 
the laws of emission return says that something that is laid out in this problem would not be possible. So we're going to have to correct that. And uh, I'll write out a quick addendum here. 37 D is the right answer. The question mentions nothing about <clears throat> average total costs. So we would not be able to make a determination about economies of scale. Meanwhile, a doubling of output, a doubling of input leading to a more than doubling of output via, clearly violates the uh, law of diminishing returns as we would expect a less than doubling of output. Okay, let's go to 38. 38 says the larger di diameter of a natural gas pipeline, the lower is the average total cost of transmitting 1,000 cubic feet of gas 1,000 miles. And this is an example of A, economies of scale, B, normative economies, C, diminishing marginal returns, and D, an increasing marginal product of labor. And so here, again, we see that uh, invest, uh, increasing uh, the uh, increase in diameter of this natural gas pipeline, which we can maybe assume is going to be uh, symbolic of increasing output level, is going to lower the average total cost of transmitting the uh, cubic uh, feet of gas. Um, that, again, seems to be an example of economies of scale where uh, as you increase output levels, the total cost or average total cost of, of, those, of those output levels are actually going to go down. And so it, this is to be a situation where economies of scale will be an uh, appropriate answer. And so we see the producer also produces us here, so that's good. 39 says, if all resources used in the production of a product are increased by 20% and output increases by 20%, then there must be A, economies of scale, B, constant returns to scale, C, diseconomies of scale, or D, increasing average total costs. And so in this kind of circumstance, uh, when we look at the, uh, yeah, when we look at the ratio of resources used to the output increase and they're both matched, that seems to be a circumstance where we would be looking at constant returns to scale, where uh, having that uh, increase in uh, resource usage is actually going to be uh, matched by the output increase that results from that resource usage increase. And so constant returns to scale would be the best answer here for this question. Um, let's take a look at the previous tutor's answer. And the previous tutor said, this economy is a scale. And so again, for this economy is a scale, we're, we would assume that increasing output would actually lead to an, an increase in overall costs. And that's not what we're seeing here. So uh, we can write a correction here for that and say that the correct answer here is B is the correct answer. Uh, the match in percentage increases uh, fits the definition of constant returns to scale. And finally, question 40 says, economies and diseconomies of scale explain why the A, short-run average fixed cost curve declines so long as output increases, B, marginal cost curve must intersect the minimum point of the firm's average total cost curve, C, long-run average total cost curve is typically U-shaped, or D, short-run average variable cost curve is U-shaped. And so uh, usually what we'll see is you'll experience economies of scale in the short run, uh, in the medium term, you'll experience constant returns to scale. In the long term, you experience this economy as a scale. And, and if you put that all together, you're going to get a uh, you're going to get a uh, graph of something like this. Oh, sorry, let me uh, draw this out. So we have whoops, costs on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis. So in the beginning you, of production, you have decreasing. Uh, so you have economies of scale, and then you have constant, econ constant uh, economies uh, of scale. 
and then you have increasing, I'm sorry, diseconomies of scale. And so this is that U shape that C is talking about, and that's what the long run average total cost curve looks like. And we can confirm this um, by looking at you know a graph that we can look up, uh, and you'll see here that we draw that long run average total cost curve as that U shape here. And so um, the correct answer would be C. Economies and discounts of scale, of scale explain why the long run average total cost curve is typically U shaped. And so that's going to be our best answer here. And so we're going to um, mark this solution as incorrect and we can move on.